Christmas time is the loveliest time, it's the loveliest time of the year. Carolous bells will soon begin to chime and we'll gather with joy and good cheer. We can hardly wait till it's time For Christmas time is the loveliest time of the year Time for children, time for their toys With their planes and their train sets a buzz Time for parents to deal with the noise When their top singer comes Santa Claus they can hardly wait till it's time For Christmas time is the loveliest time of the year Peggy wants a puppy doll One that barks when you give it a push on its snout But what's that loud box in the hall When she opens it up, a real puppy jumps out Christmas time is the merriest time It's the veriest, merriest time of the year My stockings hung on the mantle with twine Hoping that old Saint Nick will appear I can hardly wait till it's time For Christmas time is the loveliest time of the year Tiny car, one that rides on its own when you wind it up tight. What's that big box by the door when he pops off the lid, finds a Timmy size ride? Christmas time is the loveliest time, it's the bubbliest, loveliest time of the year. Carol's bells will soon be in the chime. Hey guys, Night Cruiser MA. The Indian Challenger is here. It took its sweet time. This might be the most anticipated Indian release that I can remember. The Scout could be up there as well. But this bike has been in the wings for a long time and it's finally here. What is it about this bike that has taken the industry by storm? Is it the looks? Is it the power? Is it the technology? Is it the comfort? Let's find out. It was everything, obviously. See, back when Polaris pulled the plug on Victory, those of us that had been Victory owners, and me as an Indian owner, really kind of wondered where the path was. How could you ever see a merging of DNA between Indian and the Victory line? Remember at the time that Indian was really appealing to a heritage crowd, and they had retro styling that went back to the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and they had the air-cooled engines with the pushrod technology. So it was very hard to see a path where victory could ever be infused into the Indian line. Yet here we are. Starting with about the 2019 Indian Chieftain Limited, you could begin to see much more victory influence. And in that case, with the, with the, uh, the Chieftain Limited, you could see a little bit of street glide influence in there too, but the more you look at it and the more familiar you are with the victory lines, you could actually see that there was quite a bit of victory influence there. And when you combine the best of what Victory did with the best of what Indian has, you get this bike, the 2020 Indian Challenger. There's no push rods on this engine. Instead, you get a fully liquid-cooled V-twin with overhead cams. The cylinders are over square, which means you're gonna get more power in the higher end of the rev range, kind of like a Victory. Cycle World dynoed the Challenger and found that it put out 103 horsepower and 113 pound-feet of torque to the rear wheel. That beats even the Goldwing, which puts out 98 horsepower and 109 pound-feet of torque. It trumps the 94 horsepower and 113 pound-feet of torque 
put out by the Harley Road Glide CVO and the Yamaha Star Ventures 76 horsepower and 122 pound-feet of torque. And don't even think that Harley's 114 is in the same league. This bike puts out 26 more horsepower and 12 more pound-feet of torque. But power is only one aspect of this bike. Indian has introduced technology to allow you to more confidently use all of that power. It's introduced traction control with a Bosch six-axis inertial measurement unit. This unit measures your pitch, lean angle, and acceleration at all times, and it adjusts the traction control and the ABS in order to keep you safe and to keep that power applied efficiently. In a straight line, this is going to behave like any other traction control. It's going to limit the rear wheel slip. But in the corners, that's where this is really going to shine. I could see myself taking this to a non-sport bike track day and enjoying it. There's also drag torque control, which reduces wheel slip when you're decelerating or downshifting very quickly. Size-wise, this is a big bike with a small feel. This bike has a six gallon fuel tank. In the rear, it's got the same four and a half inch uh, travel shocks that are found in other Indians. In the front, it has a 5.1 inch travel. It's got 18 gallons of storage capacity and a pretty low 26 and a half inch seat height. On my frame, I was able to flat foot it very easily and I'm, I have a 29 inch inseam. All that being said, I think we should take it on the road and see how it does. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> this is going to be a blast. Okay. Should be a tap down here. And then a tap again. Wow. That is quiet and smooth. Interesting. Okay. Those of us that are used to uh, chieftains are not going to be used to this. Okay, my I just bought these gloves because I forgot my gloves because I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. Okay. So one thing I've noticed is that the uh, the rider screen does take a little bit longer to come up than on the Chieftains. That will probably be resolved, I would imagine, in the future. Oh yeah. A very drama-free takeoff. Let's just navigate through here. All right, so let's do a couple things here before I get too far along. First of all, I'm going to get into standard mode here, or probably tour mode. So I would imagine I might be able to just tap that, but I would imagine wrong. So I'm going to pull this down and go to standard. Okay, perfect. There we go. And uh, that's about all I really need to do. Oh, wow okay so that's really interesting to me this has uh, when you take off it's it's you know I guess it's just that the bike is so quiet that it really and truly doesn't struggle at all you know when you talk about the kind of that nice cohesive bond between victory and Indian one of the things I wasn't sure about is if this thing would have any low-end grunt at all, and yet it does. Because some of those Victories did not. You know, the, uh, the Victory engines, the 106s, everybody always tells me I'm wrong, and I, I respect that, but in my opinion, uh, there was just no torquiness to it. They, they, the low end would kind of chug. This most certainly does not do that. Right off the bat, it was just smooth and effortless. Oh. Wow. I mean, it's just the smoothest takeoff I've ever felt on an Indian. And this is so nice because your gauge is right here at eye level. And you've got your touch screen right down here, so it just works really, really, really well. I cannot believe how quiet this bike is. So again, you know, for for touring, oh, 
There's so much to talk about with this bike right now. All right, let's talk about, first of all, the throttle. So the throttle is kind of an interesting thing here to me because I, I think that there's a couple things I'm really feeling. Number one, number one, and I think this can be, a, oh my gosh, this thing pulls. I think this might be adjustable, but there is a bit of a gap between when you start to twist the throttle and when you actually get the throttle to react. It feels like it's maybe a half an inch, something like that. It's, it's fine once you're used to it. It's just a little bit disconcerting compared to what you're used to. Um, but the throttle feels good. It feels, uh, feels like I shouldn't be behind this car. Uh, it does feel quite linear. Wow, I can't believe how quiet this thing is. You know, you hear more whirring than you do anything else, really. It's just so relaxed. Oh, my gosh. Effortless. Absolutely effortless. Oh, wow. Oh, that roll-on power is unbelievable. And uh, so your right hand is feeling this really nice linear thing. Actually, I'm going to put this down just so I can kind of... Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. A little double tap. Yeah. So your right hand just feels this nice linear thing. The left hand, what I can't believe is the clutch. How light it is. It is just a super light clutch. Oh, you know, I'm not even remotely in the power band of this bike yet. I'm really not. I, I mean, this... This is just blowing me away. So, you know, the throttle, you've got that little tip in that kind of has to, you kind of have to give this a little bit of a, see, there's a little dead area there. It's funny, I don't notice it as much when I'm rolling, but I notice it from a takeoff. But the clutch engagement is so smooth and so light. I mean, it's like nothing I've ever felt on an Indian or a Victory. It's just incredibly smooth and light, that clutch. I can't believe it. It's like a feather. Now the handling, oh my gosh. This thing just dives into corners so nicely. It's funny, you know, when you look at this bike, you don't realize that it, it, it doesn't look like it would be lighter than the Chieftain, and yet it is. Uh, this is about 831 pounds. So, it's, it's pretty remarkable. This thing, f I mean, I'm not saying it's drastically lighter than the Chieftain, but the fact that it's not heavier. See how, how that throttle doesn't really do anything right there? But the fact that this is not heavier than the Chieftain is pretty neat. Wow. This is probably the most effortless ride that I've ever had in my life. It's almost like I don't really have to think about what to tell the bike to do. It just does it. It's like you're just thinking it and the bike is just doing it. That's really cool. But handling wise, you know, it's funny on the road glides, they talk about, well, you know, you get a frame mounted fairing, so the steering is lighter. I don't feel the lightness in that steering. I do feel it here. This, this steering feels sport bike like. I mean, this is unbelievable. It is just incredibly nimble and, and just quick. There's no weight on those bars whatsoever. Oh, my gosh. This is a bike that I would love to take to a non-sport bike track day. This thing would be incredible. I mean, so let's see, I can flip through the screens here, I believe. Oh my gosh, look at this, this is awesome. There's just so much information here. In fact, one thing here, I don't even know what I'm looking at exactly, but I'm just so blown away by this ride. So the handling here is incredibly nimble. I've never felt, now granted, I have not ridden a Goldwing, and I believe that is what this bike competes with the most. Oh, you know, the exhaust note is not without merit. Oh, this is... 
I mean, the handling, you, you know, you're doing 45, you, you're thinking you're doing 20, and you just look down and you're doing 45. It's incredible. The gauges are so easy to read. I actually thought they'd be a little bit muddled because they have some of the, uh, like, kind of plexi uh, plexiglass or glass or whatever, I guess, plastic in front of them. And yet, I can see them just fine because there's a nice hood over, the, uh, over them. Wow. So essentially you've got basically this incredibly smooth, quiet, powerful ride. Comfort-wise, this thing is amazingly great. This seat is absolutely, I think it's got to be the most comfortable seat I've ever sat on as far as a stock seat on a bike. And I say that because it supports you, but it supports your your very lower back. I mean, right, right at kind of the right here your tailbone you're getting support so that when you do oh, lay on the throttle wow um, what you get is this rush but you're not trying to hold yourself onto the bike with with the handlebars so it's a just a okay okay yep that was uphill that was this this bike uh yay 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 okay this is something else this is a different a different beast. This engine... So, if I had to give you a con... I'm struggling right now, i got to be honest with you. Um, the exhaust is so quiet on this bike, as it is stock, that you do hear some of the ticking from the engine. Very, very small price to pay on that. Uh, and, and that can easily be remedied, uh, you know, with an exhaust. I think companies will very, very quickly come out with exhausts for this bike but if you watch what I'm talking about here see this there's like no reaction very little reaction on the on the throttle there so now again it's just a matter of getting used to it boy that turn in is beautiful see this is the kind of bike that has to be fast because you're gonna get tickets or you're gonna run from the police I mean there's really only two options here See, this is really, I mean, this has got to be the fastest cruiser I've ever been on. I'm not saying it compares to a VMAX or anything like that, or the Triumph Rocket 3, but I mean, part of, I think... Okay, I shouldn't have done that. That speed was perhaps excessive. Um, you know, part of what really enhances the feeling of speed on this bike is the smoothness and the quietness. Let me put this windshield up a tad, see if that'll... There we go. I mean, just the quietness here. You know, you're getting this power without any real sort of like, you know, uh, fussing from the engine. It's just instantly there. You know, if I turn this corner... Let me just slow down here a little bit. So if I go around this corner here, you no know, houses really right here. Actually, I'll tell you, you know, it's throaty. It's actually a pretty nice sound. But I can tell you this, some aftermarket pipes are going to make that thing awesome. Really, really awesome. I know that on the, uh, I mean, Indian's only other liquid-cooled, uh, liquid-cooled, you like that? Liquid-cooled bike is the Scout. And on the Scout, um, you know, I, I had the, uh, the Victory Octane, which is what the Scout was based off of. And uh, I put Vance and Hines grenades on that, and that was probably about the best sounding exhaust I've ever heard on a bike. Uh, on a li and that was liquid cool. So I'm pretty sure that companies can do a lot with this platform. This is going to be... Oh, I just went for the heel shifter, and there isn't one on this bike. This is pretty impressive. Let me, let me just do this. Let me hit that without hitting anything else. There we go. So what exactly is this showing me here? Oh my gosh, this is awesome. You know what else is really nice is you get the GPS right up here uh, in the top right. So no matter what screen you're looking at, even if you're not looking at a GPS screen, you get that information. That's pretty cool. I don't have GPS set to my ride, but the previous guy that rode this had it set to something. And it's telling me in zero feet, turn left onto Route 1. Wow. How cool is this? All right, let's do a little speed. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my god. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. 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 That was, uh, I am awake. I am awake and I, I, uh, hi, hi, hi. Okay. So guys, you know, literally just forget the CVOs, forget the gold wings. Uh, this bike is absolutely incredible. I mean, power wise, you know, if power were the only thing this bike had going for it, you'd say, that's a really awesome bike and I think I want it because it's that good. I mean, it's that good. I'm in fifth gear and the roll on power is like incredible, especially over 3000 RPM. I'm not saying it's bad under 3000 RPM. I'm just saying that especially over 3000, it's incredible. That, I mean, the torque just kicks in, the horsepower just takes over, and it's like, you're just gone. I wish there were, obviously, a little bit less traffic. So, ergonomically speaking, um, I do have one little nitpick. Now, as with everything I say, my nitpick comes with a few little caveats. And here's my nitpick. So, the only thing that I really wish Indian would change a little bit about their bikes and I think it's just me, I don't think it's necessarily other people that feel this way at all. But their handlebars tend to be at a weird angle for me. And in some cases, not all, their handlebars tend to sit kind of low. So here for me, these are sitting kind of low. Now I'm short, keep in mind, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm like 5'8". Oh, this is so cool. Wow. But again, See that throttle? There's nothing there. That's weird. So, you know, I feel like I am... Ha oh my gosh, I keep going for the heel shifter. I'm so used to it on my bike. Um, oh, see, you know how... F <laughs> you know how light that front wheel gets? It is unbelievable. I have heard this thing will wheelie, and I have absolutely no doubts this thing will wheelie. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Incredible. Incredible. I mean, this thing, it's so smooth. It, it just, it's so effortless. You know, and I'm a short guy. I can reach the ground completely on both sides. 29 inch inseam. Uh, this is telling me, uh, this is giving me my elevation change here, which is kind of interesting. I didn't know I had just gone up 115 feet. I have had three minutes of ride time since I reset this. I've got 29 seconds of stopped time. Uh, so I've got three minutes of moving time and 12, 36 seconds of stop time now. I've done 2.6 miles since I reset this. Oh, this thing is awesome. You know what else is really kind of impressive is that the transmission, it feels to me, and I don't know if this is the case or not, the transmission feels a little bit different to me. Let me see. Oh yeah, it does. It's actually much snappier. It's like it's a, it's like it's a more precise click. If I had to describe it, it's more of a click than a clunk. Uh, the, on the Thunderstrokes, you get more of a clunk. Either one is, is better than the other. Although I do like this a lot. But on the Thunderstrokes, it's kind of like, you know, you, you get this a very solid doof. Here you get just a boop, click type of thing that is solid and it's affirmative. You know what's happening. Oh, man. Wow. You know, um, I, 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 I'm sorry I'm going all over the place. If you know my vlogs, you know that's what I do. But I was going to say about just the ergonomics, I do feel like I have to reach toward the bars and I feel like they're too low. Now, one of the reasons I say that there's a caveat to my nitpick is that if I didn't have to reach forward to the bars, then what would happen is I'd be sitting straight up. And when you're sitting straight up, uh, bumps tend to hurt your spine more than if you're leaned forward just a little bit. So I guess there is a plus to that, but I would probably have to have bars that would come up a little bit higher than this, I think. Uh, 
I'm not talking like apes or anything, but something more in this range would be better for me, I think. Something like that. Uh, wow. What a beautiful experience. So that's my only nitpick ergonomically. But again, if I were sitting up completely straight, would I be as comfortable? Now, what this has over other bikes... So, for example, I'll tell you, like the Road Glide Special that I owned had a really nice... Uh, seating position and reach to the bars and uh, but the problem is of course you know they have no suspension travel whatsoever so you end up being basically straight up and down and you hit bumps and your spine just compresses and compresses and you're like three foot four by the time you get off the bike so here you're not going to get that for two reasons number one uh, you do have more of a reach to the bar so you are more forward than you would be on a road glide, uh, which alleviates some of that pressure. But also the fact that between the seat comfort and the, uh, simply the, the suspension, I mean, the four and a half inches of rear travel, um, this thing soaks up bumps unbelievably. This is every bit as good as the Chieftains when it comes to soaking up the bumps. It has the, you know, well-tuned Indian suspension in the rear, and uh, the front forks are fine as well, so really, I think you could probably get away with having a seating position that is a little bit more upright, simply because you're not going to get those jolting bumps that you do on, on a lot of bikes. Wow. So basically, this position here, as far as, uh, like, my feet, my feet are pretty far forward, which I like. I can stretch them out, which is nice. I don't think I could say that this is as spacious as, let's say, like a Victory Vision or a Victory Cross Country. Those bikes were known for simply being able to really uh, spread out on. Ah, but I do think it is certainly uh, a little bit... It is more roomy than, say, like a Chieftain. So I would imagine that if you averaged the foot peg and, and the, uh, the basically the, the footboard distance here in length on a uh, Chieftain with, say, like a, a Victory Cross Country or a Victory Vision, if you average those two, you would get this. I don't think it feels quite as far stretched out as, say, a Vision, but I would say it's much closer to that than, and it's certainly not as cramped as a Harley, uh, say like the road glide or the street glide you can absolutely just move your feet out I mean this is really nice this is really nice see and I can tell that I can hear that there's an exhaust note in there waiting to be found uh, because I can I can hear each individual cylinder fire and you're going to just get a nice... I think you're going to end up with people putting, you know, a lot of effort into headers and slip-ons here. You put that on, and, and my gosh, can you imagine the performance increases when you get, let's say... You know, let's say they come out with a Stage 1 kit, and they've got... Or a Stage 2, and they've got an air filter and cams and all that. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this thing can't be tuned any better than it is, but... I'm going to imagine somebody's going to come out with an air box, and then headers and maybe cams and uh, slip-ons and you could gain even more horsepower now the question is <laughs> you know the overall question here is who is this aimed at so that's a tough that's a tough call this is something that's going to attract goldwing riders it's going to attract people that would take like say like a yamaha star venture that was a big speed bump that i completely forgotten about so, <laughs> and I happen to be saying the word Yamaha as I went over it, but, um, you know, this is not a bike that's going to appeal, and that's perfectly fine, to, let's say, the, you know, the, the, the crowd that's sort of the, uh, the tough biker gang guys with the, the tattoos and the super long beards and all that stuff. It's not going to appeal to them because this bike is about riding. I mean, yeah, it's about showing off, too. It's a beautiful bike. But it is about riding, and it is a smooth operator, it is quick, it is fast. Uh, currently, it is not loud. 
but it is really, really nice. You know what this comes across as? This comes across as being just very, very well polished. Wow. I'm going to be here for 17 years. That's where I'm going to be, just sitting here. I can't believe how low the effort is on the clutch pull. It's incredible. Oh my gosh, 18 years. Here we go. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Whew. That one took my breath away a little bit. That was, that was remarkable. I mean, if you notice, I was not in first and second very long, and the reason for that is that you can't be. I mean, you just, you just go. There's no hesitation. There's no nothing. It just goes. It's incredible. Wow. 